Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. I'm your host for today, Gina Leahy, a real estate and finance attorney from Philadelphia. In today's episode, we have the failed split of Ernst & Young, Cooley screwing incoming associates, a request for comments on how to create a regulatory system for AI, and Fox News in hot water with the judge in the Dominion case over Murdoch's roles within the company. Let's make like good Paul Hastings Associates and meet our non-negotiable expectations head on with today's legal news. Ernst & Young has canceled the plan's split of its consulting and audit practices after its U.S. affiliate opted out of the plan, disrupting almost a year of negotiations to break up the big four accounting firm. The firm had intended to spin off its consulting business and tax practice into a standalone public company, but partners disagreed on compensation and resources needed to staff the remaining audit practice. The U.S. affiliate was a key sticking point. EY leaders said they would continue laying the groundwork for the split, but would need more time and investment. The plan's failure followed repeated delays and disagreements over key aspects of the deal. The logistics of separating the $45 billion operation across 75 jurisdictions had also proved challenging. The split, known as Project Everest, was intended to create two profitable and successful organizations. Law firm Cooley LLP has postponed the start date for its incoming associates of first years from November to January 2024. The law firm, founded in Silicon Valley, has laid off 150 lawyers and staff from its offices across the U.S. in late 2022. Cooley was one of the biggest recruiters of new talent during the pandemic, but shifting economic conditions have led to a slowdown in demand for business transactions work, resulting in some trimming of headcounts. Cooley has declined to comment on the delay. Junior associates have had a hard time in recent years, and recruiters predict that other firms will follow Cooley's lead in delaying start dates, especially those who overhired in 2021 and are expecting large first-year classes this fall. During the height of the pandemic, some law firms delayed the start dates for their incoming first-year classes and made pay cuts, furloughs, or other moves to trim costs. But by 2021, booming transaction markets created a frenzied demand for associate talent that forced firms to hike salaries and roll out a bevy of bonuses. However, with the recent market disruptions and overall decrease in transaction volume, some firms found themselves with more associates than work to go around as demand later cooled. The National Telecommunications and Information Administration, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, has launched a request for comment to ensure that artificial intelligence systems work as intended and do not cause harm. The Biden administration is working to create a cohesive approach to AI-related risks and opportunities. While AI systems are being recognized for their benefits, there are concerns about the potential risks to individuals and society that could result from these increasingly powerful systems. The NTIA is seeking feedback on policies that can support the development of AI audits, assessments, certifications, and other mechanisms to create a regulatory system that creates trust in AI systems. The request for comment seeks input on what policies should shape the AI accountability ecosystem including topics such as trust and safety testing, data access, incentives for accountability, and approaches for different industry sectors. The Biden administration aims to support responsible innovation and ensure appropriate guardrails to protect Americans' rights and safety with regard to AI. Comments are due 60 days from publication in the Federal Register, which would be June 10, 2023. A judge in Delaware has expressed concern about the trustworthiness of attorneys defending Fox News in a defamation case after they revealed that Rupert Murdoch is not only the chairman at Fox Corp, but also a corporate officer at its subsidiary Fox News. Delaware Supreme Court Judge Eric M. Davis said Fox lawyers had previously said that Murdoch was not an officer for the subsidiary cable network. Counsel for Fox News called Murdoch's position with the network honorific and said the role had been disclosed during a previous deposition. The judge replied that an officer of a company cannot escape responsibility by saying they don't have any tasks. This case relates to the $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit filed by voting machine software company Dominion Voting Systems against Fox News and its parent Fox Corp over baseless claims about voter fraud during the wake of the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Fox has previously argued that Murdoch had little to do with editorial decisions at the cable network. The judge claims that such information could have led him to make different rulings earlier in the case. 
Thanks so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all of the topics touched on today are in the show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Gina and my co-host Andrew is at Andrew. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is available at minimumcomp.com and wherever you get your finely crafted podcasts. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, remember, there is no I in minimum competence.